Well, good evening. It's August 14th, 2020, week 13 of the Friday Fives, and the camera crew has the, tech, the technical difficulties figured out. I'm Jess from BikeIowa.com, and I'm back this week by popular demand, sharing what's on my radar in the Iowa cycling, cycling scene. What a not great week. It has been across the great state of Iowa. At this point in 2020, I'm not even surprised there was a devastating derecho in the unlucky 13th week of summer. Here's what we've got this week. Number one, Midwest derecho and trails closed. Wowza. We had some extremely severe and unexpected weather in Iowa this past Monday morning. A derecho, a straight line windstorm that can be described as an inland hurricane, struck a large swath of the state, destroying about one third of Iowa's corn crop. It's been four days and there's still over 100,000 Iowans waiting for their electricity to be restored. It's hard to even fathom. There are trees down, there are power lines down, and I've got a friend that has an old corn crib in her second floor bedroom. Because of the severity of the storm, some trails are still closed. If you ride this weekend, ride with caution and check before you head out. We've tried to track trail closures, and some that we are aware of are the Chautauqua Valley Trail east of Bondurant is a no-go. The Raccoon River Valley Trail is mostly impassable. And the High Trestle Trail in Boone County and Dallas County is also impassable. Madrid and Slater were hit especially hard and due to liability issues and the size of the downed trees on the trail, Boone County Conservation is currently declining volunteer help to clear the trails. So be careful and be mindful if you go out to ride this weekend. There's a lot of people working really hard to try to get the trails back in shape. And that brings us to number two. There are some trails open because there's a lot of people working really hard to get the trails open again. Since the storm hit on Monday, crews have been hard at work cleaning up. And honestly, I'm impressed at the number of trails that are already open. It's not an exhaustive list, but here in central Iowa, we know the Polk County Conservation has reported that if not otherwise mentioned, most trails are open and it's, it's a pretty long list of open trails. The Army Corps of Engineers reported today that the Neil Smith Trail is open from Sycamore Access to Big Creek State Park. They don't maintain the trails south of Sycamore, so I can't report on that one with this little nugget of information. The Raccoon River Valley Trail is cleared from Waukee to Perry. And for a few days, Great Western Trail has been open from Des Moines to Cummings. So there's some good options of where to ride. But as I mentioned before, neither the list of open trails or the list of closed trails is extant. So check before you head out. And if you choose to ride, just be careful. Number three. Number three this week, is in, in memory. At bikeiowa.com, we track cycling fatalities every year and host the annual Ride of Silence. It's a project that's especially close to my heart. Five years ago this weekend, a drunk driver sped through the urban assault ride in Des Moines. It was a sunny Sunday morning, the most perfect kind of day for an organized and fun bicycle ride. But instead, it turned into one of the worst days of my life. I felt a speeding vehicle graze by my elbow and watched my boyfriend, Wade Frank, get hit. I watched him fly through the air and crumple near the sidewalk at 51st and Grand. Instead of finishing up the ride and joining our friends at Mullet's to drink beers and tell stories, we ended up at the critical care unit of Iowa Methodist Medical Center. Wade died about 52 hours after he was hit and only five days after his 41st birthday. In the following days and months, 
I was reminded over and over again why he always told his family that the best people in the world ride on two wheels. Yesterday, Wade would have turned 46. Five years can be so long, but it's also such a short period of time. And even five years later, what he believed is still true. The best people in the world do ride on two wheels. Number four, state legislature. Election day is November 3rd. I think by now here in the United States, everybody knows that. The presidential race seems to get all the attention, but that's not the only race on the ballot, and that's not what I want to talk about tonight. Here in Iowa, all 100 of our state House of Representative seats will be up for election, and half of the state Senate, or 25 state Senate seats, will be up for election. It's so important to our cycling community because the Iowa legislature writes the laws that protect, or as the case is now, don't protect cyclists. Iowa is one of the only states in the nation that doesn't have a safe passing law. Under current law, drivers that cause a serious injury or kill a cyclist are generally only fined $250 plus court costs. That is just it's crazy. It's criminal. It's ridiculous. You shouldn't be able to kill a person and get off with a $250 fine. In recent years, there's been an attempt to get a safe passing law passed in our state, and actually more than one. You get emails from the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. They keep you updated on this every single year. But a majority of legislators are not receptive. This makes me sad, and it makes me angry, because cyclists are not disposable. In the past two weeks, cyclists have been killed at Charles City, Knoxville, and Waterloo. That's three dead people in 14 days. No matter what political party you tend to align with, I think we can all agree that it's not okay for drivers to kill cyclists and face little to no consequences. So what do we do? It's time to get political between now and election day. It doesn't have to be complicated, but you have to use your voice. If a state Senate or a state House candidate knocks on your door or calls you on the phone, they're probably going to ask you what issues concern you most. And I invite you to share my answer. I mean, I have a lot of issues that concern me, but I always say that a safe passing law and bicyclist safety are some of my top issues. Political, political candidates need to know that these are important issues now so that they may remember when they are elected. You know, ask them, how do you feel about this? Because you know what? If you don't think safe passing is important, I'm gonna remember that when I fill out my ballot. And I hope you do too. And number five. Number five takes us to Des Moines to Riverview Park. This week has been the least fun of all the Friday Fives but it feels like it's just been that kind of week. But rest assured, I wanted to end on a positive note. And honestly, this is the first thing I thought of for this week's Friday Fives before I had the whole list of serious stuff and back before Monday happened. Last weekend, I was riding through Des Moines and I passed by Riverview Park on the Neil Smith Trail, just north of Captain Roy's. Many of you probably know where that's at, kind of up on the levee of the Des Moines River. And there is a $4 million project happening there to renovate the Riverview Park and build an outdoor concert venue. A significant amount of construction is already done and the playground equipment is what really caught my eye. The entire playground is themed around Riverview Amusement Park, which operated on that site from 1915 to 1978. It just looked like it's going to be an incredibly cool parks and rec location. The project at Riverview is touted as a Gray's Lake type of park, and I'm excited to see it come to fruition. It's going to be a great addition to the Oak Park, Highland Park, and Union Park neighborhoods, and really all of North Des Moines. It looks awesome. Take a look next time you ride through, and I also haven't been there since last weekend, so I hope it still looks awesome post-DRHO. 
That's it for this week. You can find more information on all of these items by checking out bikeiowa.com. And remember, we'll post Friday Fives every Friday during the summer, so that's at least a few more weeks. They'll be on Facebook and Instagram Live, and they will also go up on YouTube and Bike Iowa later on. If you have something for the Friday Fives, ping us on Facebook or send Scott an email at biker at bikeiowa.com. As always, ride safe and stay healthy. We'll see you next Friday.